The black smoke is everywhere. Thick plumes hang over Bangkok, and bursts of artillery have become the soundtrack this week for the easygoing Thai capital. Anti-government demonstrations have paralyzed Bangkok since March, when the so-called Red Shirt Movement began occupying the city, calling for the Thai Prime Minister to dissolve his government and hold new elections. Their plan failed. On Wednesday morning, protest leaders finally surrendered as the military started its push into the heart of their operation. Seventy people have been killed since mid-March and more than 40 in the last week as the fight between troops and demonstrators heated up on the streets of the city. By Wednesday night, the protesters' camp had emptied out, but the chaos is far from over. Defiant protesters set fire to buildings across the city, and the government declared a curfew for the first time in 15 years. Just two days ago, more than 6,000 red shirts were still camped out in the heart of the city. They had occupied a key commercial district in Bangkok for two months, sleeping on the streets to the constant drone of propaganda speeches and music from dozens of loudspeakers. This is Thailand. We are the land of the brave and the land of the brave. Pong Sok had come here every day after work for the past six weeks. He's a surgeon in the province of Ratchaburi and volunteers as the leader of the local red shirt movement. I cannot stay at home because I do not agree with the elected, with the elected and with the soldier or the Democrat party that they look down the poor people. They still do you know, up here and stupid and was a pain to come here. This is not, totally not true. The real trade movement is much different group of the people come together. From the culture like me to the very, very poor people. Older middle class activists like Pong Sok and the young urban protesters are united by the fact that they don't believe the current government is legitimately in power. They may come from different backgrounds, but Pong Sok says they all want democracy, justice, and to see Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, who was ousted in a 2006 military coup back in Thailand. But the red shirts were anything but subtle. Most people in Bangkok have not been part of the fight and are eager to see their life return to normal. As embassies continue to tell tourists to stay away from the city, hotel occupancy rates have fallen to as low as 20%. Even in Patpong, Bangkok's famous red light district, Abhisit makes his televised speech to empty bar stools. Almost all the clubs are shuttered, and their mostly foreign clientele are steering clear of downtown. More worrying, though, is the continuing human cost. Nearly 70 people have died, and more than 1,700 people have been injured in scenes like this one. A van that drove past the military front line, blood cakes the car's interior. I never think that we are, in the, we are the, um, the instruments of the terrorists or we are used from the leader of the states. No, never. Now the military is officially in control of the city and it's up to the government to restore peace to the streets. Thousands of protesters like Pong Sok must now accept defeat. For my kids, they always ask when the military will win. My youngest one. I asked why you want me to win. My youngest one was five, six years old. So she won the chance to win because after the win, she believed that parents will stay with her at home. They may be headed home, but the battle for Bangkok is far from over. This is Krista Mar in Bangkok for Time.com.